welcome back to my kitchen. I thought that today I would do some more baking and I'm going to make a cake, a tray cake. Now, the weather here in Edinburgh has been so gloomy for the whole of July. It kind of feels autumnal today, it's quite grey. There's lots of leaves falling off the trees and I think that's maybe from the heat wave that we had a few weeks ago. But because of that, and the gloomy weather, it feels more like late September than almost August. So I'm really in the mood for something comforting. And I was going through this book by Jamie Oliver, which is a new one called One. And all of the recipes in this book are created to be made in just one pan, which if like me, you like an easy life, that is absolute heaven. And this tray cake, the reason why I've chosen it is because it looks so simple. One of the things that I don't like about baking is that when I have to do uh, lots of different sponges, and often sponges which you layer together, they often don't rise, maybe it's something to do with my oven, but they don't rise or they're a bit wonky. This one is going to be made just in one pan, a tray baking pan, and you pour the batter into it so there's no layering up on top of each other. It's just one thing that you cut up into squares. So that sounded perfect and ideal for this day. I wanted something simple and easy that I know is going to turn out pretty good. So fingers crossed this will be nice. Also, I never really baked anything with orange before. I've often made like a chocolate orange cake, but this is, the main recipe is honey and orange. So it's something very different and I thought that it'd be a refreshing change for me to try. It is entirely coincidental that I'm wearing an orange jumper today. That is unplanned, but I guess it suits the theme of this and the autumnal weather outside. So yes, I'm ready to bake and I hope that you will join me. So to begin, I am just grating one orange, the zest of one orange into this bowl, and then we're gonna leave it to one side and get on with everything else. Now the other thing that I like about this recipe is that I don't have to get out my mixer. Even though my mixer was a very expensive piece of equipment that I bought quite a while ago, I really don't enjoy using it that much because it's a lot of effort to clean it up afterwards. Whereas when I make or bake things in a glass bowl like this and I just use my hands, I find it a lot more soothing and a lot more pleasurable. And the bonus is there's less washing up. Now anyone who's ever been to dinner at my house will know that I really do like citrus fruits a lot in my cooking. I use lemon in a lot of my food but it's just such a pleasure to cook with I love when you grate a citrus fruit like lemon or an orange the scent that fills the air in the kitchen it's just so fresh it just makes every dish seem to sing a little bit more so it is a joy to be able to be baking today and including an orange in the recipe in fact one of my very favorite fragrances in perfumes and candles is orange blossom. So I'm just zesting this as much as possible, trying not to get any of the white pit. It's quite slushy, but I think this will be wonderful in the bake. We're almost ready now to move on. So get all of this zest into the bowl. It's quite a lot. It's beautiful. So now I'm going to take another orange and I'm going to use this bread knife because that's what it recommends to finely slice this into rounds. So let's do that. Now I'm just going to drizzle half of our honey onto the oranges. Just going to take some and make sure that it covers all of them. And then what we'll do is we'll bake this in the oven for 20 minutes. 
so that these almost become like candied oranges. Okay, let's get this in the oven. So whilst those oranges are cooking in the oven, let's get back on with making the rest of our tray cake. So we're coming back to the bowl with the zest and we're just going to make the rest of the batter. And then once it is ready and the oranges are out the oven, we'll pour the batter over the oranges and then bake the cake. It is that simple. So I've got some ground almonds, which are going in. I've got a little bit of self-raising flour. I've got some yogurt, which I've put in this little teacup. I thought I haven't used this teacup for a while, so I want to get a little bit of joy from it today. So I've put this yogurt in here and it can be used as our little measuring cup. <laughs> and again, a little bit of vanilla extract. And I'm gonna crack in two eggs. Now we're going to add in the rest of the honey, drizzle that over there. This is a very, very summery bake, I have to say, with all the honey, oranges, yogurt. It's kind of like a Greek recipe. I'm sure it's going to be delicious. And then lastly, this is an optional ingredient, but I like rose water. Mm. I'm just going to add a splash. There we go. And now I'm going to whisk this all together with my hands. So as I'm mixing this together, I'm thinking it seems a little bit dry. And then I read the recipe properly again, and it says add 200 ml of olive oil, even though it is not listed in the ingredients list. So make sure that when you are doing a recipe, you check the text as well as the ingredients, because sometimes it just expects you to have things in the house. So 200 ml of olive oil and hopefully this will all come together. So I'm just going to get the oranges from the oven and we're going to spread that batter over the top and then bake it again. It's kind of got like the consistency of porridge. That's how I would describe it. So I'm not sure whether it's supposed to look like this. There is no picture in the book that shows you, but I guess we'll find out whether it's going to work. Well, let's get this into the oven for 35 minutes and hopefully it will work out well. Okay, I've just had a quick outfit change because I'm about to go and meet a friend in town for a coffee but the cake is out of the oven and I have to say it's a success. It has baked, it's risen, it looks delicious. The oranges are all beautiful. It hasn't crumbled out when I took it out of the pan, which is always a panic. So it's done. I'm gonna leave it to cool while I go out and then when I come back, I'm gonna have a little cup of tea and a square of this cake. Last week I went to stay at my parents' house in Staffordshire and I thought that I would take the opportunity to visit one of my favourite stately homes, Chatsworth House, which is in Derbyshire. So here are some little videos that I took whilst I was there. If you would like to see more of Chatsworth, check out my blog, nicholasfairford.com, where I've shared a lot of photos from my day.
So, I don't know about you, but for me, one of the things I enjoy the most when I'm visiting a stately home or landmark is visiting the gift shop. I'm one of those people who gets drawn in by those things, and I love spending quite a lot of time browsing all of the things that are sold in the gift shops. And at Chatsworth especially, they have such an amazing variety of items. I was just hooked. It was actually one of the most wonderful things that I enjoyed about the trip, was being in the gift shop and seeing all the wonderful things that they had. So I did buy a few mementos from my stay at Chatsworth here, so I thought that I'd share them with you. So, first, we have some tea. Couldn't resist getting this. It is a little tin of tea and inside are some loose, uh, some tea bags. And I just absolutely adored the tin. It's designed by an artist called Lucy Loveheart. I'll see if she's got an Instagram and link it for you. But there's the illustration of Chatsworth there. And then on the side, it's got two deer, and at the back, a selection of teapots and teacups, and then on the top, the Devonshire family crest. And I just thought this was so gorgeous, and I have to have it. What I especially like about these types of gifts is that once you have used all of the tea, you can use this tin and keep it forever, and it's such a beautiful one that I'll love that for the rest of my life, I think. So that is my little tea tin. I absolutely adore this. And having my own tea range, I've been thinking about maybe doing my own tea tin and selling it on my website, nicholasfairford.com. So let me know if that is something you would like to see. And then next in the little Chatsworth goodie bag, we have this. And again, something else that I'm obsessed with are candles and I couldn't resist getting this candle. It is a rosemary and eucalyptus candle. And this is a little range from the Chatsworth Kitchen Garden. I just love the elegant simplicity of this branding and packaging. You've got the little wheelbarrow on there, can you see? Yeah, a little wheelbarrow, uh, not a wheelbarrow, a little watering can. Uh, and it's a natural soy wax candle. And then on the top, again, Devonshire coat of arms and I have to say this smells so fresh uh, minty fresh like you're in a kitchen garden and cutting some herbs really beautiful so yes you all know that I love candles I have my own range of candles but I really like this little one it wasn't too expensive I think it was 15 pounds and that will bring a lot of pleasure into my home so finally in our bag we've got this. And this is a postcard and it is an engraving of the West Front of Chatsworth by D.I. Thornell. And I just absolutely loved this postcard. I really like little miniatures and this is kind of like a little miniature house. So I thought that I would buy that and I just like, I'm going to put it on my fireplace. I've already checked it out just here, resting. And I just think it's a little interesting touch. And it just goes to show that decor and items for the home don't have to be anything particularly special or expensive. This was 50 pence. And it's just such a cute little thing that I think will look great on the mantelpiece. And as I am such a fan of Chatsworth, it's a nice memento. I just really love the architectural style. It kind of mimics the maps in the back with the black and white engraving. I just thought that was smart and a great little gift. And actually, I should have bought quite a few of these because I think they'd make nice presents to write little notes on and then people can keep them. So yes, I really love that. Let me know what you think of the gifts. I really am happy with my little purchases. <laughs> the next thing that I wanted to share is a gift that I was sent by two friends that I came across by just shopping from their website. They have a website called architecturalwatercolors.com and on there they have these most beautiful little gifts of, I remember before, I think I showed you a little tea light pavilion. It's a cardboard cutout of um, the Petit Trianon 
in France and inside you put a little tea light and it glows. I'll link the website so that you can have a look at it. Uh, I've actually put away that little thing and I can't remember where it is. It's in a storage box so I need to get it out. But I shared their beautiful things on YouTube and they reached out to me to say thank you and we became friends. They're called Ben and Andrew and they've sent me a little postcard. Look how beautiful that is and the most gorgeous handwriting I've ever seen, so elegant. And they've sent me their new book which is called Visions of Arcadia, Pavilions and Follies of the Ancient Regime. Of the Ancient Regime. And in here it is the most beautiful collection of garden follies and pleasure pavilions of France and they are so beautifully illustrated and the history is so interesting. I'll just show you how talented they are to create these beautiful works of art. And again, I will link their website so that you can see the work that they do. But this book is basically a historic record of some beautiful pavilions in France accompanied by their exquisite little illustrations of them. Look. So this is the most gorgeous book, but also not only beautiful, highly interesting, filled with lots of information, totally fascinating. How gorgeous. So I think this would be very interesting for all of you who like art, architecture and history because you're getting lots of that all those beautiful things together in one book and it is just so beautiful to look at so this is their new book and it's been published by Rizzoli in New York so I thought that I would share that if anybody's interested I will include the link below in the description so that you can check it out but I would highly recommend to do so and also I'll be sharing more about this on my blog next week so keep your eyes peeled but yeah I wanted to share that because I thought it was very special well thank you so much for joining me I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode baking and sharing some nice things together. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, take care. Bye-bye.